Matt McCord, and it's June uh, 16th, 2021, and uh, it was a year ago last, uh, a year ago today that uh, I got this case of Bell's palsy, and I started doing videos that same day, so I'm still doing them. And here, I've been asked to talk about uh, my DIY adventures, do-it-yourself, and um, well, I've been interviewed in about oh, probably a dozen magazines on how to do your own label. I mean, uh, you know, I don't, didn't have a business plan. I just had the passion. And uh, everything in my life, I've never had any backing. And uh, people just wouldn't just help me out. So I just did it myself. I said, fuck you, I'm doing it. And I did it. And uh, with the help of Andy McKay and Shep Gordon, some real heavy-duty guys in the industry, I learned publicity, and publicity, and darn, yeah, it's uh, easy for me to say, but um, that is really the main thing that you need to know about a record label. You realize that you don't sell to fans, you sell to people who resell your records, and once you realize that, then you price it accordingly, and they buy it. But here we go. Uh, about 1996, uh, the, the band Monster had done some interviews, and um, I was friends with a guy named... They, they, and Pete Holmes was our drummer in Wild Dogs, and uh, Mick Zane has been a friend of mine forever, and uh, they talked about Wild Dogs, and there was uh, some interest. John Gregos, who owns uh, For What It's Worth Records, For What It's Worth Imports, fwiw.com on the web... He was a heavy metal master, and he said, Matt, people want your CDs. And they called the store, knowing that that was in Oregon. He said, they want your CDs. So my partner, my girlfriend, for 28 years, bought me a CD burner. And uh, Bob Stattenberg at the Recording Associates, I'd gone and seen him, and he had taken the Ravers records and the Evil Genius and all the stuff that I'd recorded since 1980 or 79, and I had the taste for it. He transferred it to, to CD. And so I was able to make copies, burn copies. It turns out that people didn't want those. They, wanted the, they thought we all made a lot of money, and so they thought I was rich, and I could just have somebody just do it. And that's not the case at all. So I made up weird covers, you know, like oh, cool graphic arts things, because my partner had given me a copy of Photoshop and said, look, learn this and you won't have to depend on Buko or any other idiot who just knows a software program and you don't have to fight them for your own vision, which I always did. So I started off that way and bingo, she was right. By today, uh, I've done 42 album covers, all the artwork, and, you know, it, it took a while to get it together, and I really thank all the people who stuck with me at the beginning. And some people, my best friends realized that I was on a journey. And, uh, you know, some people can just give it to somebody, and then it looks all professional and slick. That's never been me. I've always been the guy riding the bike with square wheels and uh, <laughs> the car with uh, two colored doors. And I don't care. It just gets me there, right? And uh, it's the passion. And... Uh, Passion and ambition will get you through where money and slickness will do it too. But uh, I find it a lot more rewarding to, uh, to do it myself. And so I did. And uh, all the things you see, all the CDs that are out, uh, pretty much are my idea. Except for the Ravers, which was uh, the producer's idea. But I've always used photographs. I don't like p paintings. I like paintings, but I like them in an art museum, not on an album cover. I'm a member of the Portland Art Museum for, God, a decade or more, and I go, I love the arts. That's where I've learned, uh, art history has uh, taught me what uh, I know about music. And uh, that's, I just keep putting music out. I'm not trying to outsell something, because uh, I take a cue from the masters, which I also learned from my friend, None of the art guys that we think are artists that are great artists today ever made any money while they were alive, right? We're so stuck on, 
you know, making money and being big time, being a star, that uh, people will stop making music because they didn't make any money. In fact, my bandmates in Wild Dogs did that. Um, that didn't make any money. Or they try to try to predict the future. And, you know, if you're an artist, you just keep creating. And you end up at the end of the line uh, with a huge body of work, along with a large body to haul off. But uh, you have a giant body of work. And uh, nothing told me, taught me that better than going to Herman Brood's studio in Amsterdam with a guy named Alan Wrench. And uh, as we walked in, there was a guy that looked like Bono from U2 walking out. He was on top of this bar. And uh, this guy that was the manager, Her- Herman Brood uh, committed suicide a, a year before we went there jumping out of a window in downtown Amsterdam. And he said, oh, it's a good thing you came now because if you would have come 10 minutes earlier, I couldn't let you in because Bono had spent the weekend. And I said, wow, we passed him on the way out. He said, yes, you did. And, uh, but in front of my face, I saw this gigantic uh, wall of his art, all the, the originals, and they were prints for sale. Alan Wrench, you would never take for an art collector, dropped like $7,000 for four prints. And uh, <laughs> we went into his stu- the studio, which left exactly the same as when he died. And there were, there were canvases everywhere. So the guy had, he was a jazz artist also, kind of like uh, Tom Waits. But I thought, wow, man, I would never know about this guy if he had stopped making his uh, pictures. And... Uh, so I thought, that's what I'm going to do. That was 2002. And I had done my first U.S. metal release, which was King of the World. And uh, I just decided, since I can do it, I'm going to. And Bryce Van Patten and I recorded every week for five years. And I came up with a lot of records. But uh, there is nothing more rewarding than doing it yourself, doing the artwork yourself, And uh, no matter what anybody thinks, if you like it, that's the most important deal. And you work with what you have to work with. And I had a ton of pictures and video stills. And well, it takes a lot of work. I couldn't, I didn't know how to do Photoshop. I started with Photoshop 4. And I learned that, and (laughs) it took a while. Uh, I used PageMill to do my website. I mean, that's how far back it goes. I've been working on this for a long time with no instruction, just. But thank you, YouTube University, because when that came on, it made things a lot easier. And, uh, and uh, well, you can do this, but uh, it takes diligence. It takes passion. It takes ambition. And you have to want it. You have to want to do this. And may, maybe uh, part of my deal was I couldn't afford to pay somebody to do it. So that was a big motivator. <laughs> I had no money to... Ask somebody to uh, do it for me. So uh, I I re released and uh, much to the chagrin of a lot of labels who got really pissed off at me that uh, why are you doing it? Well, it's my fucking band, man. It's my music, you know. Essentially, and nobody else was. Nobody else was going to put it on CD. It didn't sell much. The first couple of Wild Dogs albums sold seven hundred copies each CD, each album. Wow. We gave away 300 of them. And made no money. And, uh, <laughs> but if there's one person that wanted it, that's all I needed. A lot of people, if they don't have a big market, then they won't do it. But that's not me. So learn the graphics. And people under 30, under, people 35 and under already know all this stuff. It's the people that are 40 to 65 who, uh, Never bothered to learn, and it's too much hassle, and you know they're waiting for somebody to come and make them a star when you realize that's not the way it happened in a way and uh and it never happened that way to begin with, and it doesn't happen that way today and today's a whole new thing, and like I gotta applaud all the younger metal guys in Portland who did this themselves, and uh they didn't need me to tell them that, but uh I'm telling you my story and uh because when I started, nobody did it. They expected a label to do it, and yeah, if the label's not interested, then you lose interest in your own self, and I think that is the biggest sin of all. 
you lose faith in yourself. So if you believe in yourself, you will do it yourself. And that's what this little video is about. So uh, go to usmental.com. I sell 17 of the, uh, the CDs, and I give away 24. I have more that I haven't put up there yet. But uh, you can download 24 of them for free. And uh, I just, the guy went out of business who did my duplication, replication, and uh, yeah, I haven't talked to him since. So I don't know what the deal is. Uh, so I'll just give them away. They're on iTunes. Everything I've done is on iTunes and all the streaming formats through CD Baby and YouTube. And uh, that's cool. So the music's getting out there, and that's the main point. You know, don't ever expect to get rich from this business. And if you're on a major label, you're just going to be in debt forever. So <laughs> they'll loan you some money. Yeah, it's like a pimp. I'm buying a new dress, baby. Now go out and make me some money. And, uh, but the whole industry is changing, and, and it's going to change even more because of the pandemic. And uh, they're just not uh, in rock and roll and metal. There just is not that kind of money to throw around like there used to be. And in the coming years, it's just not going to be that much money for people to throw around, you know. Uh, this pandemic costs our country and the world quite a bit, especially our country. <clears throat> They're going to want that back. <laughs> That's just the way it works. And, uh, I mean, when's the last time your government increased your unemployment benefits by $600? Thanks, Donnie. And then when the new guy came in, he said, no, we're going to cut that in half. So <laughs> that's just the start of it. So uh, I'm not a big Trumper, but <laughs> we, were gonna, we probably would be making off better money-wise with that guy. Because uh, I think our taxes and the gas, everything's going to go up. It's not going to be called a, a depression, but it's going to certainly look like that when you go into your pocket and go, hey, where's, where's my money for a burger? God, I, Big Mac sounds so good right now. <laughs> I haven't had one in months. I've, I've finally down to the weight that I decided to try to get to when I was at 300 pounds, and I picked up a box of paper and said, if I could lose the weight of this paper off my body, I would be a lot lighter. Well, I have done it. and uh, <laughs> I'm uglier, but I'm a lot thinner. <laughs> you know, having a mouth that, that food falls out, uh, you, you just lose your... Your lust for uh, shoving your face full of food, and uh, it's probably the best for me. Anyway, let's get back to the matter at hand. Doing it yourself is very rewarding. And uh, Andy McKay, the guy who retired as the senior vice president of the Universal Music Division, told me, you don't want to be on a label, kid. He did the Ravers record. Look, with what I've taught you and what, what Shep Gordon has taught you, you don't need a label because that's really all we do. We take your money, tie you up, and pay you a little bit or as little as possible and keep you tied up forever. You can do this yourself. And he hooked me up with replicators. And so I was getting you know, 1,000 CDs made for $300. That's why I can sell them so cheap. Plus... I make the, uh, my covers. I uh, stuff the jewel cases myself. I put the resealable shrink wrap bags on them myself. And I mail them myself. I have no one else to help me. It's just a one-man operation. And uh, I like it that way. There's nobody in the way. And uh, I don't have payroll taxes. I don't write anything off in taxes. And it's just I just pay what I need to pay. And I always have. I had a practice studio for 12 years, and uh, I didn't ever claim that either. I just paid what I owed. And, uh, well, I just chalked it up to the cost of, I'm paying, paying the price to be the, paying the cost to be the boss. <laughs> uh, I finally gave the studio up because, uh, well, a year ago, the, uh, my best friend and drummer bandmate died, and it's just too hard to put a band together. You're, you're 60 years old, and... There's only a few places to play in locally, and who wants to see a bunch of old farts? The only old guy was good that was Lemmy. Probably Paul McCartney, but you don't see him touring either. But um, I do everything. I, I, because it, this is why. When I sold CDs to Europe, they wanted me to take... Every, the first run of CDs I got, 
were in shrink wrap. I had to take everyone out that I sent to Europe, get rid of the jewel cases, and send the covers and the discs only because they won't pay for the shipping. I stopped doing business with them and started going one on one. But today, since January, since February, since the new guy came in, the postage has doubled to Europe. It used to be eleven dollars to send a T-shirt, and it was nine dollars to send a couple of CDs. One guy bought some CDs. He bought twelve of them, and the shipping was a hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> no, I canceled the order and said I can't do that to you, man, and I'm not paying for it. So. We'll have to figure out something else. And he was real nice. He was in Germany. And everything in Germany is a lot cheaper than everywhere in Europe, I understand. But uh, the taxes will get you. Gas has always been $8 for a, a gallon. And, or 4 for a liter. 4 euros. And if you do the math, it's about the same. Our gas is going to reach that soon, too. Uh, anyway, the postage went way up, so... I could send two T-shirts for eleven twenty-three. Now it's twenty-three dollars per shirt to, to mail. So somebody doesn't want us to be friends, I guess, or they don't want us to do business outside the U.S. And uh, that's where my fan base is. <laughs> uh, so you license your music out. So here's what you do: you license your music out to people in other countries that you can't afford to ship to. You send them one CD. They send you money and uh, the contract that says <clears throat> they can manufacture it. Boom. There you go. Okay. Good enough. So I can't uh, stress this. I think I've, I don't know. I'm, not, I'm going with no script and I'm tired and uh, I'm just doing it because somebody asked me to. Uh, but the main thing that drew me to DIY and drove me was that I had no money to pay anybody else to help me. And nobody else wanted to put these things on CD or LP until later, until after I did it. And they realized, hey, we can do this better, and why are you doing it? And, you know, I did that, they did that with Marina Terror saying, we're going to do this better, and you know, they'll see how little they actually sell. You see, you're fighting against this. There are so many private servers where people just download music and don't care if they have the collectible jewel case and insert. They just want the music. I think people just collect all the music, you know. So you go against that. I've found so many sites that have all of my stuff on it, even the newer ones. So I'm kind of flattered that they've taken the time to do that. And, uh, well, what are you going to do, fight them? Are you going to be Lars Ulrich? Uh, so, uh, you know, people make a big deal about this. But in the long run, if you die and you leave a large body of work that has your stamp on it, and I've got my stamp on the covers, the artwork, the mastering, the recording, everything. People might not think it's, you know top-notch or state-of-the-art. Well, I can't afford that, okay? I do the best I can. And I've always been told, just do the best you can. And so I do that. And uh, I've learned how to produce myself. And I mean, all my records, this is how I do it when I record. I don't cut in. I don't cut and paste. There's none of that. Everything you hear on every record I make is front to back, one take. If the whole take sucks... I redo the whole thing, whether it's lead guitar, whether it's singing, whether it's bass, and I did it all. But I record totally old school. No cut and paste, no cut and edit and all that stuff. It's all recorded one continuous take through the whole song. That's really rare, I found out. But I just could never get the punch in thing by myself because I didn't have an engineer and uh, <laughs> so it was just easier for me to do it again Sam and uh, it worked That's, that makes me unique I found out we did the man's best friend record and uh, every word pretty much I had to do every the th I sang that thing word by word and it sucked 
Not phrase by phrase, mostly word by word, because Varney wanted to make it sound really great, and he said, boy, it just didn't, it fell on deaf ears. He was trying to make it sound like Deaf Leopard, but uh sounded like the leopard couldn't sing. <laughs> so anyway, I hope this has satisfied the people who asked me to do this, and, uh, you know, my... I, I don't know what the CD Baby was my best uh, bet for a long time, and I found out that they had closed the the physical sales to the public um, right when I w- went to go redo my website, and I learned for a few months how to do Dreamweaver, and uh, uh, <laughs> I went to go put the link on there and said, "Sorry, this this page doesn't exist," and I read that oh, they stopped that like a week <laughs> before, so I had to go back and. Uh, with all, all my 400 or more videos on YouTube that had the uh, CD Baby link, I had to change all of them. They asked me to take all the links to CD Baby off because they don't have the retail side anymore. That's what put me into business. I thought, well, shoot, man, I'm going to do it. So I compete with my, myself, my own distributor, actually. And uh, actually, you know, the with CD Baby, the, the downloads, the iTunes and the streaming... That sells outsells all the physical. I was taking sixty CDs out there a week for a while, and uh, all different titles. And now, pretty much all of the money that comes in from that are from downloads. Yeah, that's okay. I still have a lot of CDs to trip on. You know, we've only sold about four hundred CDs of each title um, <laughs> since two thousand eight. So uh, it's not going anywhere. So pick them up. They're only four ninety nine. Pretty much everything is under five bucks, and uh, all the money comes to U.S. Metal and goes back into U.S. Metal, and which I have uh, paid for hosting and the name domain until uh, twenty thirty two. So it'll be around almost as long as Putin, <laughs> and uh, that's good. That makes me feel good. So. Uh, the name should be worth something in 10 years. And uh, usmetal.com is uh, what I'm talking about. That's my site. And uh, I'm Matt McCourt, and uh, I think you've heard me talking enough. So have a good day, and happy Father's Day to y'all who's ever a dad. I'm not one of those, but uh, I played one on TV. <laughs> so thanks for watching. I'll see you later. I'm Matt McCourt. Thank you, and good night.